Well, let's talk to Timothy Hagel, who's Professor of Political Science at the University of Iowa. Welcome to the program. Uh, so the picture uh, still emerging uh, in the United States, but do the results that we've seen so far suggest that it's all over for Donald Trump's ambitions to run for president again? It certainly is a blow to those uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that it simply hit the candidates that he was supporting didn't seem to have a very good night. Uh, part of that, of course, was that the Democratic Governors Association was also pouring money into some of the candidates it thought would be more vulnerable in the general election, and that strategy seemed to work relatively well, too. Uh, we also, of course, had DeSantis, the governor of Florida, won big, one of the bright spots for Republicans, and that also seems to diminish the possibility of people wanting, meaning the voters, wanting Trump to come back and have another go at it. So the Democrats have, by and large, done better than had been expected. What does this mean for the party and for President Biden? Well, it basically staves off a huge defeat, but it doesn't do them particularly that much good on, on the whole. They still have a variety of problems to deal with, inflation, high gas prices, supply chain issues, and these sorts of things. But they managed to at least avoid that red wave. And certainly the, to the extent that Republicans, if they do get control of the House, it will stop Biden's agenda to a certain extent. But on the other hand, his agenda was stopped to some extent because he didn't have enough votes in the Senate, even though he had technically a majority with potentially Vice President Harris casting the deciding vote. And that's because of the filibuster. So. Uh, what Biden has opted to do, as Obama did as president, was use his executive power. Now, of course, some of that's going to be challenged. And, of course, as your correspondent indicated, if the Republicans control the House, there are going to be investigations and such. But for Biden, it's basically just sort of a holding action more than anything else. And I think a lot of voters are probably not going to be, Democratic voters are probably not going to be overly happy with having him run in 2024 as well. So we may see a possibility that neither Biden nor Trump ends up being the nominee for their major parties. Let's talk a little bit about his agenda because uh, Ukraine is becoming an issue for some on the Republican right. What would this mean uh, if uh, the Democrats lose their majority in the House of Representatives for the country's stance on Ukraine? Well, one of the things that some Republicans, and again, there's some dissension among the Republicans as how they want to deal with this, that certainly there, there are concerns about making sure that Ukraine doesn't lose. But on the other hand, there's got to be an end game here. In other words, it can't just be a constant flow of money, partly because that's what's causing inflation here in the United States. And so basically, they want to see a better strategy. Now, uh, foreign policy is not usually something that directly affects American elections, especially the midterms, where it's the domestic kitchen table, jobs, economy, and health care type issues that tend to dominate, and this time abortion seem to as well. So foreign policy may become a bigger issue down the road, and especially if Republicans start to push back and say, look, we can't just keep spending money to, to Ukraine. Now, again, if the, with Russia has withdrawn to certain lengths, if maybe that's a signal that they're going to pull out entirely or have a different strategy. Maybe there's going to be some kind of ceasefire. You know, we can only hope that that's going to end quickly. But if it doesn't, then Republicans may start to exert more force, at least in the House, and maybe try to convince people that, okay, we need to have a better idea of what the U.S.'s role here is, and it needs to have, again, some sort of end game so that we don't get caught in some sort of, as the phrase goes, an endless war. Professor Timothy Hagel from the University of Iowa, good to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome.